Hi, this is Deb, and you are now ready to run the experiment that you just spent so much time designing. Um, maybe you heard from me many times in comments um, that you needed to add variables to control. You need to have the speed of what you're doing. The whole point being, someone needs to be able to pick up your lab and reproduce it exactly like you intended. Uh, so nothing's implied. Everything has to be quite clear. So let's say you've got your approval. Yay, you're ready to run it. And so now you get ready to set up to run it. You want to do it exactly like you designed it. So whatever I asked you to put in there, make sure you follow those rules. Do I think this is a perfect design that you've created? Am I grading you on the perfection of your design? Absolutely not. Because look at this, our subjects. Here's the example of Deb Rob example. Our subjects are going to be across the board. They're going to be different ages, different fitnesses, some health issues, perhaps smokers, whatever. That's not what you'd normally use for this type of heart rate lab. So you need to define them so clearly so you can refer back to them. If it turns out that Alex's heart rate here, a 66 year old goes up a whole lot in your, in your experiment, you're going to talk about that and refer back to he's 66 years old and his fitness level is three. And that could be expected because of that age group. His heart has been beating a long time and perhaps might not be uh, as fit as a 19 year old. Uh, so as you run your experiment, make sure you write down all the observations. You're not only following the rules, but you're writing down observations. So that's the next part. So this first part in part three is going to be writing down how everybody looked. If somebody laughed, if your timing, if they have to do something within a certain amount of time and they do it faster or slower, write that down. It does not negate your data, but it gives you something else that you need to analyze. If it turns out they took longer, then they were slower than the other people. Perhaps their heart rate wasn't quite as high as you expected it to be. That's what you'll look at in your conclusion and your analysis. So this is the stuff you need for that, as well as your numeric data like this. So the heart rates, the resting after stimulus, five minutes after, and then figure out the differences. Um, so you'll be able to refer to that. All, that's what this is all about, referring to that data. So if you tell me, oh, John was in best shape. He, his heart rate didn't go up hardly at all. Well, uh, you can't tell me a whole lot more than that because you have to tell me, yes, John was 19 years old. He's in good shape. His fitness level is okay at six. And then John laughed several times. See this? Um, and he appeared to be very competitive with the other participants. That would play a part too. It turns out laughing raises the heart rate, um, as does being very competitive. Um, here, Bill complained about completing the experiment. That complaining, not wanting to do it, uh, that's going to do a little something to him, too. And you might want to look at your data and see how it came out. He also is winded and sweaty. So um, I'd look back and see, let's see, Bill, 30 years old, fitness lover level five. He likes to play baseball in the summer. I'm thinking he just really didn't want to do this lab. And so that might be something that plays a part as well. Anything that's going to impact your data, you're going to talk about it in your analysis. And you can't talk about it in your analysis unless you put it in your data. So these observations are so important. All right. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck and good job.